Hey everyone, welcome to another series in tips and tricks using the Squirrel platform. My name is Rob Scott and I live in Sydney. Today I want to talk and show you how to use um, the Squirrel platform to display time and calculate um, components using time. Now time can be a little bit tricky because um, whilst it is numbers, um, it has some parameters around um, 60 which really associate to the seconds, the minutes and, and the hours. So just a couple of things that I'll point out to you along the way. Let's have a look at what I've got on my screen. At the top, I essentially have two digital clocks. Um, you can see that they are running um, per second. On the left-hand one, it's got all the components, the day, the date, the time, the minute, the seconds, even the time zone that I'm in. And on the right-hand side, it's exactly the same, except I'm only showing the time and um, PM. So in other words, I've stripped out some of the components that you see on the left. In the middle, I have a small timer, almost like a stopwatch, where I can click the button and it uh, stamps the time that I started the click. And then I can click it again and it shows me the end time and I can then calculate the difference um, between the start and the, and the stop. And then on the left and the right, I have two analog looking clocks, um, essentially doing the same thing with using slightly different um, components to build them. Um, they have second hands, an hour hand, um, and um, a minute hand, and there's a couple of uh, essential bits of information around the day and um, AM and PM. On the right hand side, exactly the same, except that the second hand um, isn't in the middle, it's going around the outer edge um, to give somewhat of a, a modern take on the old analog clock. Now, what I want to tell you is that I've built everything that you see here with standard Squirrel objects. Um, and I'll start off with the top to say that you'll know that as an Excel user, there's a standard formula to display time. Um, but you could never update that unless you did that manually or you wrote, wrote a script or piece of code using Visual Basic. Um, what I want to show to you today is that Squirrel gives you the power to do exactly this without writing any scripts or any code to achieve that. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about with regards to the analog clocks that you see is that, as I said, I've built them completely using all um, Squirrel standard objects. Now, the one thing that Squirrel doesn't have is a diagonal line. It has a horizontal line and a vertical line, but it doesn't have a diagonal line that you can set. Um, and in a traditional a programming language, you could identify um, the variable x, y start and end points, and the, the, the system would typically draw the pixels between those two points. Um, now, you can't do that in um, Squirrel. I mean, you could literally um, you know, build every single pixel if you wanted to. So I've got an easy way to have done it, as you can see, and I'm going to show you how to do that. As with always, I'm not going to go into every single piece that I've done. Um, hopefully, it gives you enough information to get you going. And as you said, you, you're more than welcome always to reach out to me and um, ask me how to achieve something or share other information or your ideas with me too. Okay, let's have a look inside and see what we've done. So let's have a look at the two digital clocks at the top. Um, they are, as I said, really simple. The one on the left-hand side is associated with B2. And it is really just using the equal now formula that you would have been familiar with in Excel. The only thing that you really need to know is that you need to automate this to trigger every one second. And you do that by simply creating a loop. Um, and I've got a formula here that says C2 plus 1, which is really that number plus 1. And it constantly keeps updating um, this formula. And so let's, how, let's show you how I've achieved that uh, using a function, which I've said start clock. And start clock is one of the new functions that was recently added called a timer. And um, it's got a time delay in here, which I've left as the default to 1000 milliseconds. So in other words, every one second, this is going to update, therefore keeping in sync with, with the system's time. Um, I've linked the trigger cell to um, C2. And um, what that means is that as soon as that changes, I'm going to then move my source, which is D1, into C2, which naturally keeps this thing looping over. So if I run it in default mode, um, you'll see it's triggered it automatically and it's constantly updating this. And hence, it's um, the time is constantly updating too. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Um, the 
other one that you saw on the right hand side is exactly the same. The only difference is I've stripped out certain components. And to do that, you continue to use the now uh, uh, formula. However, you wrap it into a text formula and you then associate it with the format that you want. So it's, uh, it's equal to text, uh, open brackets now. Um, and then here's my um, format that I've used in HHMSSS AMPM. And what that does is define the formatting of how that text is displayed. So again, really simple to achieve that. And if you just wanted a simple analog or digital clock uh, showing on your development, then um, that's really easy to do. Okay, let's talk about the um, little stopwatch that I've created. Again, nothing complex. All that I've done is I've got a button and that button um, has, I've linked it to this set of data here. Um, and every time I click it, it moves a set of, uh, a a stamps the time and it either puts it into my first purple block here or my second uh, purple block there. And once I've got that, I can then do some basic calculations um, on that information. Now, whilst we're here, I just wanted to call out, particularly if you're new to no code environments, um, using an Excel environment is obviously very unstructured. And what I would really recommend is that you start building your own, um, I guess, structure around how to use it. I use colors, for example, um, in various ways. So yellow for me is to show that there's a formula in place. Um, and I use purple to identify that there's a function, particularly if I'm moving data, and red um, identifies a button for me. Um, now, you'll also notice that I use a particular formatting over here. So, for example, if I know that I've got a function where I'm moving data, um, you'll see that I use uh, double braces and identify the actual function that I've set up. So, mine says start, stop, watch. And if I go to my function list, you'll see that I have one called start stopwatch there. Same with my buttons. Um, I know that there's a button in um, my components called timer dot uh, start stop. And if I go to that one, if I go look at my timer, you'll see I've got a button called start stop. It's just good practice uh, to, to get into because these are just examples that I'm showing you. But if you're really building some fairly complex dashboards or applications, then you need to make sure that you really structure it around how you um, do that. So just some ideas for you to think about. Okay, so back to the stopwatch. Um, so I've I've got a function that essentially date stamps and here it is here. So start the stopwatch. Um, essentially, it's um, what it does is when um, one of my cells or when the cell um, equals to one, it's going to move the time which is associated to H2 and it's going to put it um, into that spot. And the same when I stop it, it puts it into that spot and then I just simply do some calculations. Be aware though, when you calculate time, my recommendation is get everything back to seconds. So if I look at my um, my hours column, um, I'm multiplying by 60 to get to minutes and then a 60 again to get to seconds. And the same with my minutes, I'm multiplying that um, difference by 60 and the seconds are already in seconds. I add all that up and then what I do is I put that into a text format again and I say G9, which is my total, and I then divide that by 86,400. That's the magic number and that's the format that I'm putting it in HHMSSS. So when I run that um, and I press start and I press stop, um, you'll see it's done the calculation and it's put it into the format um, to say that it, this, it took me two seconds to do that. Okay, so fairly straightforward, but a nice uh, little feature, particularly if you want to track the amount of time that somebody is doing something in your application, perhaps, for example, filling out a form or for answering a set of questions, um, having a start start timer might be quite handy. Okay, let's have a look at the analog clocks. Um, they're a little bit more complex, but not too, too difficult. Um, it's just understanding how I've built them. So each of the analog clocks um, has a number of features. If you look on the left-hand one, which is my clock one, um, you'll see that um, I've got two uh, gauges for each of the hours, minutes, and seconds. Now, why do I have two and not one? Well, the problem is that using the gauge and just using one, it doesn't go into a full circle. Um, it, so what I've done is I've essentially used two half gauges, one on the left and one on the right, 
and um, I've really sort of split them into two to get uh, the clock the clock effect. So obviously, because of I've got two, um, you can see that I'm go I've got some rules here um, that really show either the left or the right one at the appropriate time. Now you can you can play around with doing that. Obviously, working out exactly which one shows at a particular point in time. But in essence, um, all these are a set of rules that um, either switch the left one on or off, or the right one on or off, depending on where the actual time is. Um, and these are those are fairly basic rules. The um, the actual time is associated again with it. So let's have a look at the um, the left gauge, for example. Um, what what I've actually done. So I'm just going to have a look at some of the um, the details that I've got in here. Um, it's associated with with the time, of course. And the left hand one is um, H8, which is this time over here. Um, there is some formulas that are sitting around that, particularly when the clock gets to zero zero. I mean that's that's how it displays zero zero but we actually want that to equal 60. So um, just be aware that there are some rules that you'll need to have a look at. I'll click on the formula so you can see what I've done. Um, and if you want to then have uh, understand, you can you can stop the video and, and have and try and sort of replicate that. Um, so it's a simple thing. Um, the other thing that's quite important is uh, the scale. So you'll see, for example, that um, on the my left-hand side, um, the scale is from 30 to 60. And that's because it's that's where the 30 minutes starts and it ends at the 60. And if I look at the right hand one, um, it's from 0 to 30. Now, just a, a small trick that you need to know for the right hand side one, the right the, the standard way that the gauge works is that zero starts at the bottom of the gauge and moves upwards to the top. Now we obviously wanted to go the other way around for, from a time point of view. So you need to build a formula that's essentially going to reverse that. Um, so you can see there's my formula that I've done there. Um, I've just basically said I2, which is the time um, minus 30, or alternatively, it's going to be 30 minus I2, depending on where the particular time time is. Um, okay, so just be aware of that. That's something um, that you need to get. Otherwise, your, your clock's going to go backwards um, for that period of the time. And so the hours um, and the minutes are essentially the same as well. The only thing I'll call out for the hour one is that if you look at the actual clock um, and you look at the hour hand, that needs to move based on the amount of minutes that have gone past. Otherwise, your clock will look really odd um, if it didn't move and it only shifted from four to five. And the way that you do that is by creating some a variable movement component. And it really just is H2, which is the minutes um, divided by um, 60. And you then add that in to either the left or the right side of your um, your clock, so that the it gives them the the visual effect of the of the hour hand moving between um, the numbers, as opposed to just going from one number to the next, which wouldn't look correct. Okay, so um, so clocks aren't that difficult. As I said, um, I built that one with using gauges. On the right hand side, I've done exactly the same thing. The only difference that I've used is um, instead of having a second hand shown the way it did on the right and the left hand side, I've used um, seconds going around the outside of the clock. And how did I achieve that? Well, I simply used um, a, another feature, which is a pie chart, um, quite interestingly. So um, the pie chart is uh, really just um, got a small formula around it, and it, it's, it's got two values. Um, so if we look at the pie chart, it's associated with these two values here, which is I2, um, which is the one which is uh, the seconds, and the second value is 60 minus um, that number. So in other words, it's always going to be um, a total of 60, and it's just going to show the difference. Um, so I've just associated that with those. Um, nothing to uh, complex. So everything else has really been switched off. Um, and the only thing that I've done is um, made it into a donut shape, uh, which is a standard feature in, in the squirrel um, uh, um, configuration that you can do for a um, pie chart. So that's just an alternative way of showing some time if you want to do something a little bit different. Okay, so there you go. That's, that's time. Um, hopefully, 
um, it's it's been of interest to you. And um, there's lots of different ways, as I said, you can um, get around playing with time. Just be aware that there's uh, there's a couple of little things that you should be uh, aware of, as hopefully I've pointed out um, in, in today's session. So thanks very much for joining the session. Please reach out if you'd like some further information and have a good day.